everybody. I'm Joshua Sexton here with Geek Impulse and along with Paula. Oh, yeah. Fairfield, yes. Fairfield, sweet. Yeah. And she is the Emmy winning film yeah. sound designer. Sound designer. Of Game of Thrones. My first question is. How do you like working on such a huge project like this where maybe a lot of people didn't know what it existed maybe a couple of years ago because not everyone read the books and then it just became this huge thing in the last few seasons? The popularity of it just really blew up. Well, it's, you know, it's what we always want to work on something and you want your work to be seen. I mean, I don't think any of us anticipated what was going to happen on the show. And it's, I mean, it's, it's enormous and the roar, the collective world roar leading up to the season finale is a little unintentionally we're working on it right now, finish it. So it's, um, you know, I keep saying no pressure, uh, but I, you know, I'm so, I'm so happy to work on something that gives people uh, so much joy and, and, and often meaning. I mean, I remember going to a con of thrones and I've been to a con or your con whatever and I didn't really I mean I've never been to any of these events and, and attending and understanding uh, how significant it is for people to have this show in their lives and you know I think everyone who works on the show has deep meaning connected to it it's a very intense show and it's been a long show uh, and uh, so we all have our stories, but so does everybody who watches it. You know, people identify with different characters. You know, I've talked to people endlessly about people sorting through their own relationship trauma, for instance, different things like that. And it's fascinating to me that a show like this has come to mean so much to so many people. And I, I, I guess I feel like well, right now this collective work going up is really scary because you don't want to disappoint people. But I also you know, it's very um, reflective of where we are right now in the world. The world is a mess. Yes. And, you know, it comes to a place like, like Wonder Con or, or whatever, and you start to realize, you know, we can coexist and enjoy things together and find joy together no matter where we're from or who we are or whatever. We can do it in these places. I wish we could do it better out in the real world, but if it takes this to bring us together, to um, to be able to share real emotion and to not, I don't know, you know, it, it's funny what shows like Thrones and some of the other really popular shows do for people. I mean, it gives people a place to escape and to look at things differently. And I think, you know, I think in times like these when people are really struggling, it, 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 it is even more meaningful. You know, it's, it's something that we need even more right now. And, and so I'm happy to participate. If it, if it brings a smile or a tear or whatever, or it takes you out of your day-to-day crazy, which we are all living under right now, into this beautiful place where there are crazy, crazy creatures running around as well. But if we can dream a little together, I, I, I love that. What would you say is probably the craziest story that you've had working on the game? Well, I, you know, I I like to come up with interesting um, approaches, especially for some of that kind of other worldly stuff. And, and last year's, uh, or last season's um, Syrian, when he became uh, a white dragon. And, uh, that, was, that was heartbreaking. Yeah. Myself. And, the blue, and the blue fire in his screen. So I had been. I had been uh, at a con of the Friends just prior to that season of the Integrity Artist from Chicago, uh, Burlington Park Crew. And so I saw them at the con and I was working on getting ready to do the Blue Fire, the Dragon voice. voice. And I decided that. Um, 
I decided that I wanted to try to come up with it being sort of the essence, the, the fire and the screaming of the dragon, being the essence of the, uh, the souls of the dead army. So they were, so that the fire and the screaming would be the twisted uh, tortured souls. And so then I needed, we were going to get some um, uh, uh, voice artists in, and I met this crew of artists from Chicago. And I knew because they're musicians and artists, and I said, hey, you want to control, you know, record some tortured screams for me? So they did. And the, their, their parts of their screaming and craziness stood up all night and gave me a wonderful palette to work from. And it became the essence of the um, fire and the screaming dragon, which I, I love that. I mean, it's, it's, I think when you hear it, you don't necessarily hear that, but there's something really disturbing about the sounds it's making. Yes. And it's operating for me at a primal level because it literally is screaming souls, screaming tortured souls. That, that's, that's intense. Yeah. Really intense. <laughs> yeah, that, that actually gives uh, even more context to a lot of the stuff that we see. Uh, it actually makes it even more intense. You know, reliving that, you know, like this. Yeah. Right. That's, that's pretty awesome. Well, it's, it's, you know, you want to, I, I think the White Walkers and the Whites, uh, the Night King, the Nova Syrian, uh, they're the kind of mostly wildly crazy out there sort of entities in Game of Thrones. And again, for me, my job, part of my job is to bring you to the threshold of believability where you believe dragons are real. And in doing that, and, and, and while doing that, also trying to make you believe that White Walkers can do what they do and that dragons that turn into, you know, white corpses can fly and blow, blow blue fire and so so it's kind of, but it's like if you attach something weighty to it, something heavy, I try to attach my own kind of essence of a mythology or something like, you know, having the kind of idea that it's screaming, screaming on behalf of the white army who cannot scream anymore, for instance. I like that idea conceptually. It's something that runs through the work and whether you recognize it as such, there's something solid about it, there's something deep that, that you feel when you're watching it and, and that. That for me is where I mean it's the stories. You know, I tell myself some of these stories. It helps me choose the sounds, but I also want to make them meaningful. When you watch them. I want you to feel something, whether it's creepy, weird, cry, happy, whatever it is. I want you to feel when you're watching. And so I've got to dig deep to find that place. So. And I mean, you're doing an amazing job. I'm just say. And without any spoilers, is there anything you can give us that we uh, look forward to with this new final season? Again, without spoiling anything for us. Is there a final season? Uh, no. I've told people that maybe have their therapist on speed dial, and that's all I can I will say it's intense, um, like you've never seen before. It is a wild, wild ride with joyous, beautiful moments and horrific, like some of the stuff. I mean, it's, it's and all of it is beautiful and jaw dropping. You know, no matter how horrific it gets, it's really. I think it's a feat. I think we all, everybody on the crew or cast, wanted to give this beautiful. Show its best send off, and um, and it is that. It's, it's quite a spectacular piece. So I'm, I'm really excited for people to see it. I think everyone's gonna gonna go on a wild and crazy ride, and uh, I can't wait. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks. Thanks. Cheers.